From the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel, with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents the Daily TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And in your spirit. Welcome to the celebration of the daily televised Mass. I'm Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution thanks to the <clears throat> kindness of the late Thomas Constantine Zoma, who remembered the daily TV Mass community in his estate. This Mass is being offered in memory of Thomas and for his living and deceased family members and friends. Mr. Zoma was a person concerned with the sufferings of Christians in his homeland of Iraq and in neighboring countries. Today we offer our prayers for all the Christians in Iraq and in the Middle East, recalling the encouragement of Pope Francis who prayed for in these words. May the Lord sustain the efforts of those who work for dialogue and coexistence in the Middle East, where the Christian faith was born and is alive despite the sufferings. To the dear people of Iraq and its neighbors, may God always grant strength, perseverance, and courage. We thank the estate of Thomas Constantine Soma for the gift of this Mass. And now as we celebrate this Eucharist in this season of Easter, we ask the Lord to fill our hearts with joy. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, hope and light of the sincere, we humbly entreat you to dispose our hearts to offer you worthy praise and ever to extol you by dutiful proclamation of praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The apostles were being questioned by the high priest before the council. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up and ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time. Then he said to the members of the council, fellow Israelites, consider carefully what you propose to do to these men. For some time ago, Theodos rose up claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. But he was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and disappeared. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up at the time of the census and got people to follow him. He also perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. Because if the plan or this undertaking is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. In that case, you may even be found fighting against God. They were convinced by him, and when they had called in the apostles, they had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. As they left the council, the apostles rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach and proclaim Jesus as the Messiah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. 
of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I asked of the Lord that will I seek to live in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life To behold the beauty of the Lord And to inquire in his temple One thing I seek To dwell in the house of the Lord I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. One thing I seek to dwell in the heart Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. No one lives on bread alone. But on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we going to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each one of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so they sat down about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told the disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled seven baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this indeed is the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, 
he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our first reading, we find the disciples and a great, the apostles in a great deal of trouble. They are in prison. They could be flogged. They could be even put to death. But the actual death of an apostle, of a deacon, of a disciple, would be two chapters later when Stephen speaks in a dramatic way in front of the council, the same council that they are going to face, and he is stoned to death. So here we have the apostles who are filled with the Holy Spirit. They have received the mandate from the Lord, go out and proclaim the good news, baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They have received the gift of Pentecost. They are inspired, they are on fire, they are strengthened, and they go out boldly. These are the same apostles that ran away in the Garden of Gethsemane. And then we have the council and we have Gamaliel, who is their advocate. My only problem is Luke is writing this about a couple of decades later. How did he know what Gamaliel has said? I can't remember the homily I preached last week. How would he remember 20 years later? But what Luke did have was a real character, Gamaliel, who was wise, who was respected, who was prudent, and who was a mentor of Paul, as we hear in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22. He also had another historical fact. Theodos, who was a rebel and who came to a sad end, and then Judas the Galilean, who also met with a sad end. So he had these historical facts, and Luke would embed this story in the historical reality of his own time. And he had two elements to keep in mind. One is that he wanted to tell the people that the salvation that Jesus acquired and redeemed was for all. The Jews in the Old Testament figured that God had saved them, had protected them, had made them a chosen race. But now in the New Covenant, in the New Testament, Jesus said the salvation is for all, Jews and Gentiles. And that goes down through all the centuries, even till our own day. Salvation is for all. The second thing that he wanted to say was that when Jesus prayed, it was for all of us. And he realized that in Matthew chapter 10, Jesus said that you, when you proclaim the good news, you will be persecuted. You will be brought before rulers and governors and, and kings. And they will think that they are doing a great job by persecuting you. And that story continues through our time, even till today. We have seen men, who pro men and women who proclaim the good news and have been put to death, and a huge number of people put to death in only recent, in the last four or five centuries in Kenya, in Vietnam, in Japan. And we celebrate them as Pope Francis did in uh, his intention only last month. Let us pray for martyrs and let us pray for witnesses who proclaim the good news because in their persecution, they give us strength and they serve as models for us to proclaim the good news in season and out of season. They are for us signs of God's love which brings us to the gospel when John speaks about the miracles of Jesus that are a sign. And by the very, very word sign, it means it's not an end in itself. A sign points to something. A sign says, go beyond. In the synoptic gospels, all the miracles that were done were there as a provenance for Jesus' proclamation of the kingdom. So whether Jesus healed the sick, calmed the storm, fed the multitudes, it was a sign, it was a testimony and a witness to the proclamation. For John, it's quite different. John says what we really need to watch is we need to watch what Jesus is proclaiming to us. And that is the good news, the good news to the poor, to set captives free. And the only way you and I can realize the good news is through these signs. 
There are seven signs in the gospel according to St. John, beginning with the changing of the water into wine in chapter 2, and the last sign in chapter 11, when Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. But these are not to be considered in themselves. They are only a sign. And what are they a sign of? In now the multiplication of the loaves, that Jesus is not only interested in our physical nourishment, but in our spiritual nourishment as well. He will go forward as soon as he's finished this to tell them, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats of this bread will have life. Whoever drinks of the cup of salvation. But many people were caught up in the sign. They were not ready to listen to what Jesus was telling them. And we find that many people said this is too hard to follow, and they walked away. And Jesus would turn to his apostle. Jesus who was so human. Are you also going to go away? And they said, where can we go, Lord? You are the master of everlasting life. You are the Lord of life. The apostles did not reach the sign and stop there. They went beyond. We are challenged to do the same. God bless you all. Let us now pray. For all those in our daily televised prayer, mass intention book, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. During this Easter season, we offer our community prayer in thanksgiving for the new life that is ours in the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the risen Christ strengthen by his healing presence all those among us who are isolated, who are forgotten, who feel abandoned, that we may live in peace and glorify him with our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the late Constantine Zoma, Thomas Constantine Zoma, that there may be peace in the Middle East and especially in places like Gaza and Palestine, and Israel. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, receive these our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash away my iniquities. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that this our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all of the Holy Church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim him, to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us at every and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificed victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. 
holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <coughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, all the clergy, and this entire people of God. Remember our brothers and sisters. Remember Thomas Constantine Zoma and all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of this year church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And in your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.